Hey guys, would like to show you uh, one example of a bad capacitor. This is a patent ceiling fan here, and uh, pull the pull chain, and then I'm going to spin it by hand. Stop it. Spin it by hand the other direction, and with the pull chain off. You will see it does spin freely. It's not a bearing issue. It doesn't need help getting started. Once again, the power is on. Whichever way I spin it. And I can even turn the reverse switch. Let's turn the reverse switch the other direction. Spin it by hand one way. Spin it by hand the other way. So, that's a bad capacitor. And uh, we'll open it up and replace it. That in the part. For no someone who's never seen one of these flywheels up close, it's the same as a Newtone flywheel, so that's interesting. These are from New Haven, Indiana. Here's the capacitor. And uh, there's one thick black wire on one side, and uh, two white wires and a thin black wire on the other side. So I'm making a note of that. wires and it's covered in tape and it appears to have been leaking so uh, you can look at it and see that it's bad look at all that capacitor gunk onto my hands but I don't know what value it's supposed to be motor is made in Japan that's interesting so let's see if we can unwrap it. And uh, get a value off of it. I'm looking at all this 100 year old electrical tape that's on here. Yep. Five microfarads. So just for the heck of it, let's get the capacitor tester and let's test it and see where we are in relation to 5 microfarads. Trying to do it with one hand is difficult because of the camera. interesting. It tests good, but we know it's not good because it's uh, quite literally leaking. But it does test out at 5, so that's good to know that uh, just because something tests good doesn't mean that it is good. So, um, let's see what we have in the box here. Might even have an oil-filled 5. What do we got? Three. What is this? Four. Three. Okay, I'm going to dig for a five and we will uh, report back. Hey guys, so we're continuing the troubleshooting process. I couldn't find a 5 oil filled, so what I decided to do was to test it with the 4 to see um, to see uh, uh, how that worked, because theoretically it should work perfectly with a 4, just a hair slow. So what I did is I put the wired the 4 in and uh, plugged it in and checked it out, and it still was doing the same thing. So uh, I said to myself, I said, well, there's only a few things that could still be the case. Because um, if it's not the capacitor, it's either one of the connections to the capacitor or it's uh, the one of the motor coils. And uh, the motor coils are very unlikely unless there's physical damage to the motor or it got burned up. <clears throat> and uh, neither of those seem to be the case. So I traced uh, all the wire leads from the capacitor 
and found out that the black lead here, the individual black lead, um, was supposed to be connected to the reverse switch, but it had come disconnected. So, then when I power it up now, seems like it works perfectly. And we'll try, where is the reverse switch? We'll try reversing it. Did it go the other way? Yep. So, because that five capacitor was leaky, looking at least, but tested good. Let's try it again with the five. I'm gonna try to flap the camera. That's just the canopy, you don't need to see that. So let's disconnect the four. I'm gonna go get the five from over there by the capacitor tester. If I had a, there's more high-tech capacitor testers that can test for leakage and test for other things. Mine is very basic. Mine was $11 on eBay, if that gives you an indication of how basic. So. Okay. Let's power it up. And it runs fine with the original capacitor. So it was, in fact, not a bad capacitor, but a bad connection to the capacitor. So I hope this has been a uh, good lesson in troubleshooting. And uh, I'm going to see if I have time to put this together and hang it up. Hey, guys. This is a patent ceiling fan. Unlike most of these, this one's actually labeled patent on the top of it. Um, in the previous video where we're working on the capacitor, you can see the labels a little better. So these are uh, kind of a mystery to us because uh, it's almost like no two we've ever seen are alike. It's a bit of an exaggeration. I'm sure there are some that are alike, but very few. Uh, I have another one that's very similar to this, but the blades are different, the blade brackets are different, and the canopy is different. And for all I know, the motor housing is too, although it looks the same in my memory. Um, yeah, then there's just a bunch of different variations. Short blades, long blades, different blade tips, cane, different blade arms. Um, yeah, it just goes on. Rubber flywheel, metal flywheel. Um, somebody can, else can probably list uh, all the differences better than I can. This is the first one I've seen with cane, at least that I recall. Um, they do have some similarities with Fasco, the canopy at least. This one has a new tone flywheel. The motor is from Japan. It's not a Fasco motor, so I'm not Fasco motors. Um, yeah, I really don't know what to make of them. They're a pretty cheap construction for an American made fan, but they have a good motor in it. This one has a uh, pull chain that controls both the light and the fan, <coughs> the way that older Casablancas did, so it was off, fan, light, and then we'll have light and fan. Or at least that's what we're supposed to be having. Is that what we got here? Yeah, I think it was just... I haven't done much to this. When in the previous video we uh, confirmed that the capacitor was good, it was, t it was uh, giving the symptoms of a bad capacitor, but that's in part because it was disconnected. So with the light and fan here, Point three one. Let's uh that should be both off if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, yep. And then what is that off? Yes. And this should be just fan. Point two. It's actually very quiet um for a metal flywheel fan with no rubber. Turn the variable speed a quarter of a turn, which brings us to 0.45. Blades are kind of warped, so I'm wondering if it's going to uh, wobble. Yep, a little bit. 
it came with that schoolhouse fitter, not with the schoolhouse globe. That's the same schoolhouse globe that I've been using for the past few videos, just because it's been handy. Turn another quarter of a turn. It's it's rated at 1.1 amps with no light, 1.5 amps with light, 2.5 amps max, which is kind of interesting. Okay. Another quarter turn takes us all the way. And what'd you know it? We're right on point. It's pretty impressive. It's also supposed to be 200 RPM. And if I pull it now, just light. No fan. There are also a lot of other fans in different designs that we are assume are patent because of similarities to this, but um, they haven't been confirmed. I've got that oak leaf thing in the museum that seems very patent-y, but uh, there's no guarantee that it's patent. When I lived in Mississippi, the how I lived in a, a huge old house that uh, somebody was allowing me to uh, have a room in, and uh, there had to be 10 or 15 bedrooms in the house, and they all had these. One in my room had one broken blade arm that was replaced with some new cheap blade arm, so it wobbled badly, and it also made a lot of noise. I still used it. Um, I never thought to check to see if the ones in the other bedrooms were the same or not, or if they had variations. Um, and then in the den, there was a, uh, bright brass R&M original. Just horseshoe brackets, not reverse air or adapt air. It's on a variable speed control. And, uh, it was very much, like, seemed like an old plantation house, so... <laughs> Uh, start again in low reverse. I'm trying to think of what other, if there are any other fans there. I remember the dozen or so patents in the bedroom and the R&M original in the, in the family room. Kitchen and living room did not have, or parlor I guess they called it, did not have fans. I actually had never even been in the entire house. It was so big and I only had one room and then I would be in the kitchen for meals, but um, I only came in the other rooms infrequently. Uh, the couple that owned the house, the pastor and wife, they also had a church, and the church in their uh, new building had no fans, but their old building had a dozen or so white Hunter Originals, four blade with the uh, newer brackets. That's low. Reverse. You know what, did I check the amps for low reverse? Let's try again. Oh, it's got the light, that's why it's... Yeah. We can just skip all the different settings and go straight to high. Another interesting thing about these is that they used some Fasco parts, the canopies and the uh, motors in some of them, but not all of them. Some of them had GE motors, this one had the Japanese motor, etc., etc., but some of them used uh, Fasco motors, and then Patton later bought Fasco. And then uh, Marley later bought Patton.
This does better than I thought it would, given the shape it was in. I assumed it would have bearing problems and would wobble terribly with those warp blades, and in reality, it performs decent. So I thought it would be noisy and it's silent, so you never know what you're going to get.